All right, guys. Well, we got the pockets on these cleaned up. Uh, cut a little piece of strap for each one. These will get glued in with some structural putty, little fillet underneath with the finger, and then just a couple layers of mat over the top. That's gonna capture that and hold it in place. So these aren't subject to any, um, any pressure this way. So they're just simply here to hold the strap in place. So we'll be able to essentially slip this in there just like that and then center it. Cause this is upside down right now. Um, as the hatch is in place here and the bolt is drawn down, all the pressure will actually be against the other side of this pocket. That is super thick. It's gonna have another layer. Um, Another layer, two more layers. Two more layers, yeah. Two more layers on top of it. So yeah, this isn't going anywhere. So like I say, this is simply just here to hold this in place while you put the bolt in and, and tighten it down. Like I say, it's upside down, so just there to hold it. So that's how that's gonna work. So Matt has these cuts for both hatches. Get them glued in place, be good to go. Um, meanwhile, the plugs are ready over here. One for the, the small round hatch that will be over the stuffing box. The other one is over the bearing and coupling. So we just put a layer of tape on there and then some PVA that will allow those to release. Um, what we're gonna have going on here is that this is the layer that will be on top of this here. And then we'll be building a knife edge off of this just like in the front hold. And so I just uh, hit this with the grinder and then the sander to give it a bit of a rebate. That'll allow us to wrap some cloth over the raw edge right here and down. And then we'll, gla we'll just glass out in place while it's still wet. And before it kicks off, we'll drop the plug into place. And then we'll come back the other way like this and start building this knife edge. Um, we're just running it long, so it'll be probably about close to an inch long. And then we'll just come back and, and we'll trim it to, to height afterwards. And then it's going to get a lot more. It's going to get more layers built up on the inside of this. And then when the final layer of the shaft alley goes down, it'll get more incorporated in it that way. And so we'll end up with a knife edge that is about a half inch thick or about a half inch wide, I should say and be flat on top and that's going to create the ceiling surface for our hatch so this is kind of how we did the other one i know it seems um like there's a lot of work here and it's time consuming yes and no there is a fair amount of work here um, but the trade-off is that if you use aluminum it's going to corrode it's going to fail after time you're going to have a bunch of holes there and it's always gonna be leaking a little bit. Um, you can 5200 it in and it'll be good, but it's very hard to remove. And the nice thing about this fiberglass is that it'll never corrode, it'll never rot. So we won't have issues like where our gasket is embedded into the hatch. Um, that's a common failure point for these hatches. It corrodes right there, it pushes those gaskets out. You have to pull out the gasket, you have to try and get in there and clean up that aluminum. It's all oxidized, it's all pitted. Then you just squirt some, some sealant in there and you glue it all back in and hopefully it's good for a while. Um, we won't have any of those issues because this is fiberglass, it doesn't corrode. So when this is done, it'll be done forever. It'll be easy to take on and off, inspect our bearings, inspect our um, stuffing box, tighten it up, repack it if, if necessary. And it's just gonna be a really nice way to have this all um, put together.
So we're not concerned with the height of this right now. This will all get trimmed up later. What's going on? Oh, hello. Well, it's quite an exciting day. <laughs> Today is the day that we lay down our first chunk of aft shaft alley cover, aft hold shaft alley cover. So it's been a long time coming. We've got all the prep done. All the pipes are and extras are kind of like prepped and ready to be mounted into place. We got our two last uh, pipe mount bracket holders glued in yesterday and we got our through hole through bulkhead I guess fittings done and so really all that remains is connecting them but that'll be before we put our back piece of cover on yeah but for now we are gonna put this forward piece on and yeah start getting it finalized pretty exciting yeah it looks good down there so I don't think that we captured any of this when we did the forward one um, we were just pressed for time so of course it's done already but a lot of folks wanted to know what the process was when we were putting these down so we'll go ahead and capture it on the back of this um, exact same process that we used on the forward one doing everything exactly the same just quite not quite as much space as yeah. all so um yeah here we go uh, matt just got that all prepped up i guess i'm getting stuff wiped down i'm gonna go mix up some putty and uh some resin and we'll get this glued in um this first one just goes in it's notch, so it'll be flat with the top of the stringer and then there'll be two more layers on top of that i know it sounds a lot like overkill but part of it's to um help insulate the shaft alley if we ever want to freeze on board that's going to be helpful to have that additional thickness um, that will give us about an r15 roughly give or take a little bit less because of the um, hatches uh, the inspection hatches won't be quite as thick but uh, but that'll help boy it just got windy out yeah I hear that so yeah I'll pass you off to Matt here um, guys can check things out down there so here's our cover piece it's the one which we notched for our crossbar for the inspection hatch and like Ed was saying this goes down here like that and just slides right into this little notch on the stringer just like so comes up flush you can see notches into this stringer nicely and kind of tapers off up here this was added a little bit later so it didn't have the same thickness of glass so that just zipped off a little bit of that glass and we'll just lay a few layers probably same layup schedule to connect those two and tie them together got a little bit of resin here without our edges the foam and the laminations here that's up top with some putty and we'll get this thing into place All right, well, it's a big old pile of putty. Buddy. Is this ladder in your way? Um, just a little bit. You Only wanna... room enough for one down here at the moment. Yep. Just wetting out these raw edges of foam here. 
We actually go over these a couple of times usually when we are going to glue them in because the foam will absorb some of your resin. And I don't know if it compromises anything, but usually better not to have a dry surface, huh, Dad? Yeah, it doesn't absorb much, but it does, uh, it just fills little voids with all little gaps. But yeah, it definitely helps uh, the putty bond better, I think, if it's wetted out. Yeah. All right. Got a nice tub of putty. Spread this out on these landing areas. All right, slap this thing down. Got a nice thick layer of stuff all around the rim. I didn't get much on this face because it'll just squish it down, scrape it down when I slide the top piece in. So that will come after we put it down, just uh, smear some into the crack. There we go. Just like that. In she goes. We're winning. So there's probably a lot of squeeze out on the underside. I'll just take my popsicle stick and leave a nice fillet there. And then I'll go over it with a chip brush just to smooth out any sort of lumps. And tomorrow we'll come back through with some matting and lay it on there, tight and good. So you can see some squeeze out over, or maybe you can. Hold on. You guys see the squeeze out up in there along the edge and over there. I'll just take my top school stick and smooth that out real quick. How am I doing? Let me know. Look good, guys? All right. Cool. All right, well, that's first piece, Dad. Woo-hoo! Nice. That's exciting. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. Well, it has been. Um, yeah, lots of distractions of spring fishing and family and everything else. So, yeah, it'd be good to get this wrapped up. This part goes pretty fast, actually. Um, yeah, it actually, like, we had that Ford one done in probably less than a week, really. Like, yeah. once they start going down, they go down fast, so. I think that Just might all have... the prep that takes forever. Yeah, that's for sure. So, I'll smooth out the rest of that seam there, and we'll bring you guys back tomorrow once we uh, lay some pieces over this and get the next one down.
So, see you then. All right, so back down in the hole, eh, Dad? Yeah. So Matt got this piece glued in last night. Nice and solid. Looks great. Um, it's a good feeling knowing that I'm not going to be back in the shaft alley much longer, at least standing in there. Um, next up is this piece here. So I just have a little bit of cleanup to do on this back bulkhead. I got a couple of high spots, so there's a bit of a gap here. I'll flatten this off a little bit. Might need to put a slight bevel on the back side of this, and we'll just tighten up that gap. Then we're not using a whole bunch of putty in there and essentially just wasting it. Yeah, we'll get that one fit. Um, and then this stuff changed a little bit over time um, as we progressed through this project and actually got like the stuffing box installed and this coupling and bearing. Um, all these holes in these panels were cut out a long time ago before any of this stuff was actually in. And so it's changed a little bit over time as we actually got this panel down here and saw where it was gonna be in relation to the bearing and the coupling. We wanted to have good access to get in here and be able to unfold this if we need to, to get in here and inspect this bearing or if we ever had a problem with it, actually uh, replace it. So, um, so needless to say, our next layer isn't exactly in the right place anymore. Um, originally, this was a forward spot. It would just get a notch there and slide up to the bulkhead. Um, as you can see, that's not really the case anymore. And it also overlaps back here. So originally, this would have been about two and a half, three inches forward. Now it's back a little bit more. It's no big deal. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this one fit, and then we'll trim this one. Um, that overlap bridges this gap right here. And then we'll just do the same thing up here. We'll probably trim a couple of inches off that, and then this seam isn't landing right on top of that seam. We'll, get, we'll bridge that gap. And then bear in mind, there's one more layer going on top of all of this. So that being said, it's time to don my gear and do a little fun, glorious grinding. That looks good. Yeah. Happy with it? So a little chunk up forward to uh, trim the shape and then I guess spread up the next layer. <laughs> Gluing down this second piece. Got all prepped and ready, cleaned up. I got a bunch of fitting done earlier on a few little pieces and uh, the other covers to the next layer up. So that'll be all prepped and ready once these are kicked off. Keep on rolling. Little time jump here. Uh, just laid out some 
uh, layers of fabric underneath this piece to bring it out to level, same as this. Putting up the edge of it, stuck it in. So just uh, cleaning this up, no fillet needed because there's one more layer going on top of it. So I'll ram some stuff down to that crack right there. You can see it's a little bit floaty right here. So throw some weights on it, make sure it stays down. Uh, carrying on, I have pieces cut for the rest of this part where I'm sitting currently. Uh, we'll get those laminated down and get our cover on. So this piece I just kind of uh, patched in just because I had a bunch of leftover pieces. Didn't want to like cut a whole sheet just to cut a whole chunk out of the middle and also cut the width of it would have just been a bunch of extra scrap for the scrap pile that's already quite overflowing so try and use a bunch of little scrap pieces do that pile a bit I'm also leaving a little lip right here that I'll just spread a little bit of putty on to uh, have it squeeze out in the middle and I just flatten it instead of having this jagged edge of fiberglass there to grind off and deal with just like Round it off flat, it'll look good. All right, so we're about to put down another layer of covers, all prepped and ready. Dad got them trimmed, rounded on the edge there. I got my pieces of fiberglass prepped and ready. This is just the in-between two laminate layers, so just a layer of mat to go down against that raw foam, and then a layer of 45 to uh, connect to this half, I guess. Just kind of like give us that kind of cushion where we can push it down and have it bond well. So, uh, gonna go down there. Got just a little bit of vacuuming to do on the cover again, but it's pretty clean down there. Little uh, crack to fill with some putty and then we'll slap down our laminations there. Let's get going.
All right, everyone. Well, about to get rolling on the big lamination. You can see we have all our pieces cut up here. And those are gonna be laminated to our shaft alley covers down here. They're all prepped and ready. Uh, got our knife edge um, started, I guess. Need to bulk up the actual knife edge a little bit, but Got all that laminated anyways, the channel piece. So uh, it's all cleaned, edges are puttied, ready to receive some cloth. So we'll get rolling on her here and I'll be uh, quite an exciting day to have that done. It's been a long time coming. Right, Dad? That's right. <laughs> quite exciting, it looks good. Very happy with it. Oh yeah, the other exciting part is laminations from over there are all gone. Just one little piece of uh, straight up laminated sheet to go over this foam uh, void over here. You can see the grinded off outline. That's where it will receive that piece of lamination. We'll fill in that void with foam. And, and have a nice flat area there. Yeah, be nice and flat and easy. So yeah.
All right, everyone. Pretty exciting moment about to happen. I'll go over it quick because my pot's already cooking. Uh, we've been foaming in this side sump here. Actually, it's not even a sump. It's just been a void. That's the last exposed foam. We got laminated just a thin a uh, couple layers of 90 and that's going to be going over the top of this after which it's uh after it's glued down uh, we'll tab it in just lightly poke holes in it spray foam through it filling out the rest of this void and that'll be the last ugliness covered up so pretty exciting moment been a long time coming feels good to be to this point so, last cup and get this done.